Good day. Welcome to this short little lesson and introduction to motion tweens in Adobe Animate. Uh, this is being recorded in a CC, uh, the, I don't know, latest version of 2017. What you see in front of you here is some stars that are flying across the sky. Yeah, I know. They're, they're not shooting stars. Okay, they're just stars that are rotating. You can think of them as ninja stars. Okay, but there's nobody they're hitting, so there's no blood. All right, and nothing for them to go thwop or wah. No. So what we want to do is introduce you to uh, what I've got here in this scene. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause. And right now the scene was being looped. So I'm going to turn off the looping function, which is down at the bottom. This scene also is clipped. So I have this uh, this small little clipping up in the corner. I'm going to turn this off so you can see the, the full stars. In fact, I'm going to zoom out to 50% so you can see that this scene has a series of layers that has stars that just fly across the screen. And what we'll do over the next 12 minutes or so is show you how this was built. So to do that I'm going to select all these layers and I'm going to trash them. I have a HD size image that I've created. Uh, how do I know it's HD? Well in the properties I got 1920 by 1080. Okay so it's a standard high definition not uh, 12 um, by 720. I'm running at 24 frames a second and I did that all by just going file new. Now when I did the file new thing I since I don't really care i'm going to be exporting this as an mp4 file so i just chose action script 3 just because that's what i'm used to it's old school days of flash i typed in the 1920 by the 1080 and i left it as 24 all right so to get a picture in the background uh, that's going to be the very first thing i'll, I'll uh, place in there and then i'm going to build uh, some stars and uh, fly them across the screen that's the whole motion tweening part of the lecture so putting in the background is as simple as importing in a picture you just have to go file and you just have to go import and i'm going to import a picture into the library it's actually already there this is a picture that i got off of pixabay so it is uh, creative commons open and i'm going to take and drag it onto my stage so that it's right there um, you've got the nice little code hints to so you can help get this set this is a 1920 by 1080 picture so uh, that when I say the little code hints there's actually a little placement on there and in the old days you'd have to go to the properties menu and actually hand type it in or maybe drag it down hopefully it's centered but uh, pretty much I like those little hints that pop up how long is this animation gonna be well, it's gonna run 90 frames give or take about four seconds so what I want is I want this picture, this picture is just going to be a background, so I don't really want it animated. So what I want is I want this layer to extend out 90 frames. All right. So to do that in layer one, I'm just going to click on the 90 and I'm going to press F5. What F5 does is that takes what's ever there and extends it out to frame 90. I'm also going to take layer one and I'm going to double click on the word, but I'm just going to call it backing for me. And I am uh, going to always spell things wrong because that just happens all the dang time and lock it so I don't get it. So I'm going to add another layer. Boom. And on the second layer, I'm going to call this one star. And that's going to be one of the many stars that I'm going to build. You're not going to see me do all of them, but this is just a simple introduction. Adding in a star on the layer is uh, just going to be, I'll click on frame one. I will go into uh, where my poly star tool is. And uh, in the polystar tool, I'm going to click on the options and I'm going to make sure that it's set to star instead of being in a polygon. I'll go ahead and just choose star. And instead of having five sides, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, how many? Uh, 18. Yeah, there you go. Okay. That's really not so much of a ninja star. But clicking and dragging is how you do it. Once you get the polystar tool made, you got it set for blue. Um, I could just click and I could drag and boom, there's one. Yeah. And uh, maybe that's bigger than what I need, but hey, you know, it's fine. So if I want to do a motion tween, a simple motion tween is something where you have uh, an item in a layer. And what I want to do is I want to click on, now it doesn't matter how many frames you have set for that layer, but you need to just have the item drawn and created. And then you go to the layer and you right click on the layer and you choose create motion tween. It's going to ask you a question because you see if you want to do a motion tween, any items that you draw or type or write gonna, are going to need to be movie clips. So it's going to come up with a little thing that says, hey, you want to convert this into uh, you know uh, a symbol? And that symbol is going to technically be a movie clip. But pretty much this is, this is just a simple in introduction. Just say yes. Say, OK, boom. You'll know that it's converted into a symbol because it will, instead of being a, kind of that selection kind of pattern that's there, it will have a blue line going around it. 
Also, you'll know it's converted into a motion tween because it is in the library listed as a symbol. There you go. Now, one of the things you need to know is that if you have a certain amount of frames that already exist and you add an element, it will animate over however many frames that exists. If you were to do this, I'm going to do it again. And let's say that I want to, uh, to come in here and I put a keyframe somewhere. I would press F6 to add a keyframe. I want my animation to start at frame, well, in this case, 33. And I'm going to draw in another star. And this time when I draw on the other, the next second star, I'm going to have it be slightly different color. So we'll go with a nice little kind of darker red. And we'll also make that a little bit smaller. All right. So the second star, if I would like this to be motion tweened, I would right click on this and create a motion tween. And again, it'll ask me, do I want to convert it? All right. Now you could convert it ahead of time, but the answer is why? It's going to just do it for you automatically. Okay. And it'll give you a shorter motion tween based upon wherever that keyframe was. Now, could you extend this? Yeah. You can put your cursor at the very end of a motion tween and you can click and you can drag it and you can make it as long. Now you might think to yourself, okay, wait, could I move the entire piece? Well, if you select it somehow, either whether you select on the layer like that or the smart thing would be to come in here and uh, and take if you don't double click on it because then it opens up to the edit window but if you were to click on this say like click on the very first frame and hold the shift key down and click on the last frame so that the entire piece is selected then you can click in the middle and hold with the left mouse button and drag the entire piece forward and backwards like in this case, I wanted to make sure that they all ended up at frame 90. However, sometimes doing that, if you uh, end up with extra frames, you may actually need to get rid of those extra frames. Uh, why? Well, they're left over because that's something that was left out of a flash. It, flash always wanted to have frames existing when this was flash, but it's not flash anymore, but it's still just a leftover piece. In my case, I'm just going to tell it to remove those frames, and those frames are now gone. The motion tween, if you are not familiar with how a motion tween works, is it's an animation that just says, hey, you need a beginning position and an ending position. So I'll start with the red one first, and I will turn the eyeball off on the blue so it's not in the way. The red is going to be selected with the direct selection tool, which is V. That's the selection tool. And I'm going to put my cursor at frame 10, and that's where my keyframe is. And that's that black dot there. Now what I want to do is I'm going to move my playback head or my timeline marker and I'm going to push this down to frame 90 and then I'm going to take and select the object and drag it just somewhere it doesn't really matter where what you will see is you'll see another little black dot show up that small little dot says hey that's a keyframe position and as soon as you have a beginning position that is different from the ending or the ending position different from the beginning you can hold the little playback head and you can drag it this is called scrubbing and you can scrub right through to see where your animation is and that is as simple as a motion tween gets now when we are talking about playing with motion tweens, um, you saw that I have put a little bit of rotation in at mine at the beginning. So I'm going to have the motion, this, uh, this, it kind of gets selected all by itself. And, uh, and I'm not on any particular keyframe, but if you look over here in the properties, it gives me the ability to do a rotation. How many? As many times as I want. If I click on three, then when this rotates, it will rotate in a certain direction. Uh oh, actually it looks like it had, was rotating clockwise. Maybe I want it to go counterclockwise. Or maybe I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I don't really know. Let's see, I suppose. It's probably got a lot of stars, so I don't really know the direction that it's spinning. Because I probably got a whole Doppler thing going on. That's how it goes. But fun thing about the, uh, the, the path that you see, those dots that you see in there, if you are on the selection tool and you put your cursor right close to that path, you'll see the little curve. That allows you to alter the shape of a vector if you're doing with shapes in animate but in our case it also allows us to take and alter the curve of the motion path and so when i get this path happening boom there we go all right any keyframe can always be edited in and out so i can take and i can adjust this like crazy i can also come back and i can pull up bits and pieces now the thing that will happen is that after you do the first edit then it's not going to be quite as smooth of a transition as you had before because you end up adding 
uh, if if this this tool works by basing upon what it thinks is going to be a curve and what it thinks is going to be a point and so as soon as you start adding more and more of these then you start adding what what animate thinks is a point and so you end up getting really convoluted paths now that could be fun uh, I'm gonna hit the play button and uh, there you go boom okay not I don't know if that's really fun but it is and if you don't like any of that stuff Control Z is your friend because Control Z can put this right back to a simple straight path. And if I wanted to adjust this, the suggestion would be uh, to find your beginning and find your end so that the line hasn't been changed yet. And then go to the middle and you get the ability to do a nice big curve. So turning on the blue at the same time, um, what I did is I took in, I have the beginning position, I go out to frame number 90, and I have that as an ending position. And I'm just going to have this kind of go straight across like that. Now, you might think to yourself, well, where's my motion path? Well, do you see how layer 3 is still selected? That's the motion path that you're seeing. So if that layer 3 is selected and my star, which was my blue layer, is not selected, there you go. That's how you can see the motion path. So you kind of have to be aware about what is going to get selected. And again, I did a little rotation because I'm thinking, hey, these are stars. Uh, how do I get the rotation? Well, I want to make sure that when I get the rotation, I am, if you click on the actual item, you're not going to see a rotation going on. So you actually want to click somewhere on the tween, not on a keyframe, somewhere on the tween, the motion tween. And then that gives you the ability to set the rotation based upon whatever symbol is, uh, is listed there. And in my case, I'm just going to do eight turns this time. And I get a nice quick little speed thing there. And if I want to take and, uh, and alter this so that it kind of comes down at an angle. Yeah. And uh, that's way more than just uh, three, four, five minutes. But uh, that's a nice, simple little introduction to motion tweens. And uh, pretty much if you're thinking about this being an animation, you just go into export. You'd export it as video. And, uh, and you would make sure you render this out into Adobe Media Encoder. Uh, so it's going to render out a QuickTime movie as a temporary file. And then when you hit the export button, it will take and it'll open up Media Encoder and you can transfer it to any format that you want. And that is a small little introduction to motion tweens in Adobe Animate.